This is Mark Scheller, top 1% St. Louis realtor. If you know me, you know that I like surveys and plot plans and maps and topos. For new homes, having this information up front can be critical to the success of your project. I already have some videos on my channel about how to locate your property lines. So today, for those of you who own land or if you want to own farms and acreage, here are some trigger thoughts on how to locate your future house within the boundary lines you have already located prior. We are going to discuss topography and grading and soil and those tiny little footing pins that add accuracy to your project. I hope you're on the edge of your seat tingling with excitement because we are going to do all of that and more next. No, 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 next. So here we are at the job site. This is the road coming to the job site. Here is the driveway going up to a new house very soon. So 10 years ago, prior owners had had this property surveyed $2,200 because it's, an, it's a large piece of property. And then what those surveyors back then did is with wooden stakes, they marked the property corners. And right here is the wooden stake and then the yellow pin is exactly the front left property corner. From here, the surveyors can shoot up the hill and they can use direction, distance, and GPS to locate some hub foundation markers. I'll show this to you shortly. Some hub foundation markers so that the foundation can be exactly where it's supposed to be. A few minutes ago, we started down by the driveway apron down here. It's about 15 feet below us and way down the hill here, okay? And we found the front property stake. All right, from there, they will set up a transit and they are looking to put some foundation hubs up here closer to the job site. So they'll take a straight shot from down here. You've probably seen the tall poles and they will take straight site to site distance and they'll come up here to the job site. I'll get a better view of that for you later. And here is conveniently located by the bathroom and the Bobcat and the forums. Here is, and it even says on there, control point, please keep. Okay, so this is a foundation hub. There's a little shiny piece there. I'm not sure if you can really see it on the video or not. All right, and that is a straight shot from down there all the way up here. So this is a datum or a control node. From here, they will put other orange ones. Okay, see where that is orange? This is orange. The rest of these are pink that are used for the actual footing and foundations as well. And then going to the other side of the job site, there is another foundation datum right over there. I'm not sure if I can zoom in or not, but that is how they bring the data and they make sure that they're accurate all the way up from the surveying stakes. Some foundations are very simple with 30 foot by 50 foot rectangles. They have maybe six or eight foundation corners, but this particular footprint is so big. It's 115 feet from way over there by the garage side, all the way back here to the frost walls. And it has 22 foundation corners, which is way more than most, which makes it interesting content, okay? Let's talk soil. I'm sure you were thinking, Mark, let's talk about the soil. All right. We've all heard of nightmares where you buy a piece of property and you go to dig the foundation and it's shelf rock or it's granite or it's something that's just a mess. This particular job site, you can tell on that far side over there, they dug down 10 feet. The if soil can be amazing, this soil is great. It acts like topsoil. There's very little, if any, red clay or expansive soils at all. We didn't see a cistern. We didn't see evidence of an old septic field. We didn't see any kind of burial grounds from the Civil War. Yes, that has happened. And so this particular job site is really turning out well. And next is a quick snapshot of what these foundation stakes look like, okay? There will be pink markers here, and what they're really doing is marking the thicker wooden peg that's down below it. For instance, it says wall line feet, 1.77 feet. So this dig here, 
this dig from where the stake was down to where the footing is supposed to be, about 1.77 feet. Next, the high lift, okay, the bulldozer operator comes in to dig the hole. And from up here in the cab, they can easily see these pink stakes around the job site. And imagine at that point, there is no hole. It's just flat land without trees. Okay, so what they're looking for is he's looking for these pink stakes up here. Okay, see about nine feet up here? There's a pink stake and it says five feet off of house corner. The house corner will be right here with these little footing stakes and then five feet off of it. So the bulldozer, the high lift operator is able to dig out all of this, but then leave the marker stake there because they're going to need them in the future. So he digs all of this in hopes that it's level. And here we are at the basement floor level with the footings that are all framed out. They wanna make darn sure that this is a flat area. So right in the middle, he will put a laser level and he will put a orange stake there showing where he shot. So right here, I'll get on my knees. Right here, the laser level is shooting around the job site. And with his easy measuring tape, he can go around the job site and make sure that these footings are completely, not kind of, completely flat. All right, I mean within like a half an inch, okay? Next will be the piers. Much of the load for the house goes through the foundation. The inside load of the house goes through the piers. So the piers and the columns are also marked along with their size, big square right here, that's where the column is gonna go. One, two, three piers, and then a fourth over here. And then the beam goes into the pocket in the side of the foundation wall. Most of you have seen that prior. So here's a good view of what a basement looks like before there's a foundation here. On the more complicated foundations, they will actually put in these little footing pins like this. They're little tiny pins, and that marks the inside of the footing there. So we'll see those. And then at each corner, that's the outside corner. This is the inside corner, and they go all the way around. And off of this is where the foundation contractor can say, okay, I need an eight inch thick by 24 inch wide footing. And that is what keeps that very accurate. And that's it for today's video on how to locate your house on your land. What did I miss? I felt like I missed something. There was other content to discuss, but I didn't want to make this video 25 minutes for you to consume. Ask me questions, share your comments, both positive and negative. And if you enjoy this content from me, subscribe below and click the notification bell. Okay, thank you for your attention today, everyone, and for letting me dig deeper, see what I did there, into this topic. This is Mark Scheller saying measure twice and cut once.